This premiere is sponsored by True Gold Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report, today, May 8, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do things a little bit different tonight. We're going to set this up as a premiere, and I'm going to chat with you guys, but we will be going live after that because I have tornadoes inbound towards my house. We're going to start out here with our KP indexes. And we see absolutely no action, no solar winds or plasma for the entire day of May 8th, 2024. Taking a closer look, we see again, absolutely no action. The highest print we see is a KP 2.67. This is the estimated planetary K index that was just redone at the cost of tens of thousands of dollars to taxpayers. Heading over to Ghost X-Ray Flux, this has been the busiest solar activity day that I remember. We started off the day with an X1 at 1.33 UTC time. That came from Sunspot Group AR3663 that is no longer Alpha Beta Delta Gamma, it's Alpha Beta Gamma. That was soon followed up by another X flare, an X1 again at 437. That one came from Sunspot AR3664, which is Alpha Beta Delta Gamma, the most complex sunspot that we know of. Next, we had an M7, an M7 solar flare, and that's going to be right here at 644. It also came out of 3664. As you will see on our next slide, that was followed by an M4.4. And I'm guessing that's going to be our M4.4 right in there. The time on that is, well, it's the same time. It's a long distance flare. So as soon as this one ends, this one began. Now there's more M flares than I'm naming. I'm just naming the strongest M flares. We'll look at all of the M flares. Which, again, we're almost running in the M-Flare baseline. We just went under the M-Flare for just a few hours here. All right, next we have an M8.5 right here. Happened at 1126 UTC time. That would be 526 in the morning central time here in the U.S. That was followed up by an M7.8 solar flare. Here we see 7.83 according to Ghost X-Ray Flux. Now remember, this is a satellite that orbits about 200 miles above Earth's crust, according to NASA. And the sun is 93.3 million miles away. Now, that was followed up by two strong M-class flares. They're calling them an M9.83 and an M9.76 one after another, and we're just coming out of that configuration as the day has just ended. Let's continue. Again, I want everyone to know that we will be following up with a live weather report as we have tornadoes across the U.S., and it looks like I have tornadoes headed towards my home as well. The current value, keeping that M baseline, which is the first time anyone's ever seen this as far as I know, we have a 60% chance of an X-class solar flare. Definitely the highest percentage I've ever seen. A 95% chance of an M-class solar flare. Definitely the highest percentage I've ever seen. The biggest flare of the day was the first flare of the day, the X1.08. These are the flares that began today. You can see that AR3663 has become Lex complex and has lost its delta class, whereas AR3664 has grown and become more complex. It's now alpha, beta, delta, gamma. And you can see all the flares I just talked about. The X1 here, 
followed up by the next X1 here. Several M flares, we will count those in a second. Followed by the M7 here that we just talked about, also out of AR3664. Followed by the M4.4 out of AR3663. 729, we went over that one. Followed by the M8.5 out of AR3664. 8.5 at 1126. That was followed up by an M7.8 solar flare at 1732. You'll notice that just as that one ends, we see a sympathetical solar flare almost pop off from AR3663, although it was only an M2.9. We did not cover that earlier. Finally, we ended the day with two M flares, an M9 they're calling it out, and an M9.7. I think they were a little bit stronger than that. They were both generated at the very end of the day. And if you'll notice, this one actually gets out of M territory or actually takes a dip when this one starts at 2205. So it's really one flare. Uh, they're calling it two, both out of AR3664, Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma. Now let's count how many M flares we've had today. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That has to be some sort of a record. 16 M class solar flares in one 24 hour period, or really one day. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we're heading over to H2 and Cactus 1, and you can see the date here is going to be the 6th. So let's see if this takes us, look at all these things that look like lasers into the sun. Don't see much happening over on H2, do we? No rocks inbound on Cactus, per se. And it's still the 6th. It might not have been updated. Today's, uh, obviously... The 8th, this is the 7th. It doesn't look like they're going to give us any data whatsoever. This is going to end before the first of the largest flares. Although that was a pretty large flare there. And that was a huge flare. And that does end it, believe it or not. We will go to the end there. And that brought us to 1348 UTC time on this. All right, next over to Lasco C3. I've been told that most of the data is here. We're looking at Venus on the right and Jupiter on the left. Finally figured out what we're looking at. Let's see what this looks like. Let's see if we can see these halo eruptions here. It looks to be hung up here. See if I can manually bring it forward. So this is not working at all. Oh, Lord. So they took out four hours plus here. And really no excuse for that whatsoever. Uh, this is obviously not functioning correctly. We do have Lasco C3 coming up, so we'll watch it on the Space Weather Dashboard instead. So this is what our Earth-facing solar disk looks like. There it goes, 3663. It's almost going to make it around the limb. Should have made it around the limb in the next 48 hours for sure. And central disk, we have 3664 and 3668, which is also growing in size. We have additional sunspots, 3669, 3666, 3667, and 3670, and more sunspots coming around the limb. For a little bit newer picture that was only taken a few moments ago, going over to HMI Intensigram, 3663 is coming close to crespin that limb, although we know if it expels a large flare, although it's not as complex as it used to be, we would have a geomagnetic connection to that limb via our geomagnetic rope or our connection to the sun that pulls us through space away from the Big Bang at 544,000 miles an hour behind the sun. Now, 
We also see 3668 and 3664 looking like they're morphing together. We talked about the other sunspots and their additional sunspots coming around the bend. Looks like we have a total of six Earth-facing sunspots currently. Over to NOAA's KP Index Breakdown Forecast from May 8th, May 9th, and May 10th. We have nothing but ones and twos. I think a 367 here should be a geomagnetic disturbance tomorrow on the 9th. We'll keep our eyes open for that. But they see no geomagnetic storms, even with all the N flares and X flares we've seen over the last several days. Headed over to GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager, we see it the Big explosion that just occurred there. I believe that's the M9.7, 9.8, very last solar flare of the day. And we can see that AR3663 is almost made around the limb. This has all been taken within the last hour. I want you to also notice that we have two coronal holes Earth facing now, which means we could see some solar winds inbound. And we would at least know where they came from. And what else do you see? You also see all the sunspots that are about to come around the limb here. The backside is ferocious looking. All right, heading over to Alaska C3. This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. It is working here and not on the Soho Movie Theater. You can see this huge halo eruption, and there's another one right behind it. Those are the two they're afraid of. The timing on any of this doesn't work out. It looks like there was also a halo eruption from one of those last two M9 flares here, based on the timing, right about there. A halo eruption, right as the time ends here. There's a second one, faster probably, and it looks like there's a third one right here too. You can see it coming out right there at the end. Wow, a third chrome mass injection that no one's mentioned yet because it was that last 9.7 flare out of AR3664, and that was part of the M9 flare. Big eruption, a third one that no one's spoken about. That one started at 2100 UTC time. The second part of it started just after it as it ended and went through the end of the day here. That's going to be a third or third and fourth halo eruption. All right, heading over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. It's going to be one after another. Luckily, we didn't get started until 1700. That was a 7.8 flare. And we're going to have, that was a smaller flare. We're going to have the two 9.0 and 9.7 or 9.8, 9.7 flares here in just a second. We'll see what those look like. It's probably the first, and as it slowly starts to fade, there is the second at 2200. And we're talking about two hours of an M9 flare. Incredible situation here. The radiation is pouring down on all living things. Now, please remember we will be live. After this, I have some tornadoes headed towards my home. and There's tornadoes across the country that we need to go over, but I wanted to be able to present this to you without any interruptions. So we're going to do it as a premiere, and I will be in the chat. What we have is our shields down. We have really no plasma that went over 10 centimeters cubed. We had this strange spike in solar winds here. Not a real big deal to 550. And solar winds have really subsided all day long. You can see them at 460, and then we do have about 45 minutes of missing time here, which I never personally like. Shields are completely down. That tells you it's not fighting off any solar weather whatsoever, and this matches up to our KP index perfectly. So if I did not mention it, that was Discover Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite. This is the older ACE Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite, and we're seeing the same thing. Solar wind started out at 5 100 went up to about 550 and have pretty much gone down to about 470 here at the end of the day. And plasma has a couple of readings that I think are abnormal here over 10, but for most all of the day, we've stayed under 10 centimeters cubed, which is the space weather threshold. 
Although within the last few hours, we're starting to see something hitting our shields. Remember, we like to check, double check, and triple check. Here we see we started the day off at 481. We had that spike up. Let's see if we can grab the highest part, 534.7. And then slowly we worked our way down. And I guess the end of the day was right about here, 451, the end of the day. Plasma-wise, we still have that strange 25.11. Does that say 23.11? With my eyes, it's hard to tell. It looks like 29.11. That's just one minute, one tick. The rest of the day, which is probably abnormal or incorrect information we've stayed between 1.5 and 2.5 centimeters cubed so there's no plasma in this whatever this was again is probably a corrupted data situation nothing like that happens for just one minute it was 29.11 over to sto on the left 193 angstroms on the right 171 angstroms we're going to start on the left over here i've got it set up for the start of the day we should see both sunspots produce an X1 class solar flare. The first one was 3663 up here, followed by another X flare at a 3664, and that was closer to 437 UTC time. We will be able to see the time down here. Also remember, we had more than a dozen, a dozen M flares. Here we go on the left. Today starts now. We see the first X flare there, the second X flare there. It's like the camera is hit there, and we don't get very far into the day at all. It doesn't look like. See how far they take this into the day? Well, that is pretty far. So it's hard to pick out which is which, obviously. The day is going to start right about now. We should have both of them with an X1. And I don't know what's causing that camera movement. Something must have impacted the spacecraft that's taking these pictures. All right, let's start this out. Uh, now it is today. Both of them should X flare here. And I guess there they went. And again, something hits that same camera. Obviously, SDO is one camera with many different filters. Lots of activity coming from the two sunspots only. AR3663 up here constantly. And AR3664, which now is as big as the Carrington event sunspot. Over to the back side of our sun, we see some horrific looking sunspots coming around. They're calling this one big sunspot, 005. I'm sure it'll be close enough, five or six. We also have green 004, probably named by morning time, if not already named. This was taken a day and a half ago. Then we have a 010. That is probably a sunspot that we've dealt with before. You can see it also here. I'm sure that they're going to tell us that they took pictures of the backside of the sun from Mars, 34.4 million miles away, which I call Kaka on. Ladies and gentlemen, we used to have a satellite behind and a satellite C, which was on the back side of the sun. They said in 2017 it was wiped out by an X flare. Why have we not been able to get another satellite up when we fire satellites up every day? Ridiculous. All right, over to STO HMI magnetogram. This was taken at 8.30, 30 minutes ago can see that AR3664 has already moved a little bit off to the right here and that AR663 is cresting the limb. This is a reverse polarity sunspot. That's white over black in the southern hemisphere. Am I right? White over black should always be in the northern hemisphere. I see that this sunspot here coming around is also reverse polarity with negative the black over the white. We see that with almost every sunspot coming around Although they taught us it was a rare gem to see one. And y'all can see, I'm sure, this sunspot coming around. We'll see if they've updated Soho. They hadn't in four or five days. And however hard this is to believe, 
Today is Wednesday, and this has not been updated since the 30th. That's going to be 9 or 10 days ago. You can see 430 at 12 14 and this is the latest image and I am on soho.nasa.gov data real time latest image unbelievable waste of money taxpayers money our money and we can see that well NASA is no better than NOAA they haven't modeled any of the chrome mass ejections that popped off today yet even though one of them popped off at 0, 0100 UTC time, which was 24 hours ago. Nothing's been modeled. They still have that same impact, a light impact for the 4th and 5th, which never happened. And then another impact for the, looks like 9th or 10th, maybe the 10th or 11th. This hasn't even been touched since a week, maybe, or longer. Remember the fourth and fifth we were supposed to get hit which never occurred at this point we have to assume everyone is well in their shelter uh, let's take a look at what we have here this is the fourth and fifth they forecasted it the same way nothing occurred no plasma hit us according to discover ace according to every tool we have uh, even the University of Maryland reports no plasma impact on the 4th or 5th. The solar winds are at 500 uh, today. They started about 500, went up to about 525, and they're at 470 now. All that would be off of this chart. So they totally blew that. And by the way, they've got the plasma still here for the day on the 8th, which is right here. Watch the top. It is right here. They've got it at about 5, going up to about 10. And we saw that it never came close to 10. It was between 1.5 and 2.5 all day long. And again, if we use that area for solar winds as well, solar winds started out at 500, went up to 525. They're at 470. All would be off the chart here. This is the EESA. They either did not report an impact that they forecasted or there was no impact, A or B. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have Venus, one of the planets we can see. Can't see Mercury. You can see Venus, and then we see Jupiter on the other side of Lasco C3. Wow. Not a real big scope of view like I thought it was. The moon has actually moved from being completely lined up with the sun, Jupiter, and Uranus. I would be expecting earthquakes tonight and tomorrow, maybe even the next day. All the major planets are on the opposite side of our solar system. Remember, Earth is orbiting around counterclockwise around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. And all the planets, including the sun, are coming right at you on this model at 544,000 miles an hour away from the Big Bang, according to, well, science. And finally, to give you an idea of where you stand in this solar system, this galaxy, and this universe, Earth to scale is this size, although it would be being pulled by the sun, which would mean it would be at least in the southern hemisphere and probably below the sun, but about that distance as well. So it's easily wiped out by a large solar eruption and associated coronal mass ejection. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back right after this. Everything's set up with our live tornado update for the day it's been hectic out there i've tornadoes on the way to my house hope to see you there and please share our video please subscribe and always remember that anything's possible in bizarro world and remember i think there's four cmes inbound none of them have been modeled the model is with goodard spiral hasn't been updated in about a week or more and neither has the Soho's latest image.
God bless you guys. Remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.